When I first got to Nigeria, in the first couple of months of being here, one of my friends died from taking a fake malaria pill. And that was, you know, such, it, that had such an impact on me. You know, I was, you know, really sad for the family, really sad for, you know, it to happen. But I was also really embarrassed and shame. I felt so much shame. And I, and I think it came from this idea that I helped build a health company in the U.S. where I saw elderly people in their 90s plus living great lives because they have access to quality health care. And here in Nigeria, someone young can just die. My name is Vivian Nwaka and I am CEO of MedZaf. Nigeria's pharmaceutical industry is worth $1.3 billion. Fake or substandard medication takes up 17% of this market share. The result? Deteriorating health, organ failure, and thousands of deaths every year. It was one of such losses that spurred Vivian Nwaka to action. She had lost a friend to fake malaria drugs, and the US-born Nigerian entrepreneur decided to commit her life to one thing combating substandard medication by supplying genuine ones. I'd like you to tell me about MedZaf. What does it do and how does it work? MedZaf is a medication supply chain management solution for hospitals and pharmacies. What we found is that the supply chain, um, so medications getting from manufacturers all the way down to patients, has many issues. And we realized that technology could really help solve these issues. So you had lived all your life in the U.S. and you came into Nigeria for some other thing and you discovered that you had to do something about healthcare. You know, but how did you get the resources, the startup, and about the people? I mean, you didn't know anyone. How did you get the people, you know, to work with you to achieve this dream? I literally just obsessively talked about the concept everywhere that I went because I, I just kept thinking it just, I couldn't get it off my mind. You know, and so I would inspire someone here or there to help me with something. And, and then it just became a momentum uh, that people just said, I'll help you do this. When Safe Medication for Africa or MedZaf officially launched in January 2017, most medical practitioners were skeptical about her idea and were hesitant to partner with her. But MedZaf finally landed their first medical supply deal in the same year worth 200,000 naira. Tell me about your first client. I mean, that first person who said, okay, I'm gonna put my money in MedZaf. And how did it work out? Our first customer was um, a, a hospital called Paleon Clinic, uh, run by Dr. Onya um, here in VI. And we explained the vision to her, you know, and I think she just is a visionary, you know, and she's thinking about the future of Nigeria. She's a doctor herself. She started her own hospital because of her own understanding of the challenges in the healthcare, and she wants to make an impact too. And she's thinking about, you know, all of these issues that are affecting, you know, the industry. So she's very knowledgeable about it. And I just think she was just like, close my eyes. Let me just give these these girls a chance. It was people like that that just, you know, just said, look, the vision is going to be the future of. Of, of the pharmaceutical industry in Africa. And we need these startups to survive and to break in in order to actually be able to make this happen and change this industry. MedZaf's mode of operation is quite simple. Hospitals and pharmaceutical companies register on the website and order for medication. MedZaf's team verifies them within 48 hours. They then order original products directly from the manufacturer, supply to the pharmacies, and receive payment on delivery. So far, over 400 pharmacies and hospitals have signed up to MedZaf. Duro Sholaya Hospital is one of MedZaf's 400 strong clientele. The hospital began to patronize MedZaf since 2017, and they have only good songs to sing about their service. For the past 18 months, We've um, been getting a, a, quite a large proportion of our drugs through MedSAP. Um, they came in and 
in an innovative way, they've helped us um, almost like restructure procure, the procuring pattern and um, they've been very good about the supplies. I really have no, no complaints about them. They deliver when they say they will deliver and they bring the drugs packaged, well packaged and well supplied. And this is especially important for those of us who are clinicians um, in Nigeria because, because of the cost implications. A lot of us now in our practices depend on the generic drugs. So if you have somebody who is reputable and who you can actually hold on to <laughs> to help you sort out among the myriads of uh, generics for the real top quality one, then you tend to be, you are very happy about it and you rely on them. The Nigerian government has supported Medzaf, not financially, but in form of exposure. The government sponsored the company to three different countries for international business events where Vivian met top foreign dignitaries and pitched before a select crowd of investors. The government um, has been really supportive. Um, uh, last year they took us to South Korea and we won um, best, Im uh, best Impact, a uh, company with Best Impact at an ICU uh, conference in South Korea. Um, they took us to Paris um, for um, uh, Viva Africa, where I shook hands with President Macron. He came to the Medzap booth, and that gave us a lot of visibility. Um, they also took us to Silicon Valley, and um, we pitched in front of the uh, vice president, and uh, that was a great experience. Medzaf participated in the Nigerian round of the Seed Stars World Competition in 2017 and won Best Startup and Company with Best Social Impact. But reflecting on her early days, Vivian couldn't have predicted this. When I started the company, I mean, there was a lot of people who said what you're doing is impossible, uh, we don't understand it. It's like, what don't you understand about like medication delivery? You know. Um, a lot of potential investors would say, oh, this isn't big enough. And I'm like, everybody in the country needs to take a medication at least three times in their life, right? This young startup faced more to face its challenges, and the Nigerian healthcare system was only doing so much to tackle the fake drug problem. We've struggled, you know, we had to, we had to get, try to get credit terms. You know, at first, in the beginning, we didn't have any credit. So we had to use our own working capital to purchase medications, do quality control, pay for it, you know, everybody, the lights and everything, deliver it to the hospitals, then get paid on delivery. So the beginning was very hard, very, very hard. When I asked Vivian about her experience in medical procurement and Nigeria's major healthcare problem, she had this to say. I don't think fake drugs are the biggest issue. I think the biggest issue is substandard medication. So sub, the difference is a fake medication is I just took, I saw a pack of, you know, really fancy Panadol and I copied the package correctly, but I just put fake pills in there because I want to make a, you know, thousand percent profit margin, right? That's fake medication and it exists, right? It does exist. But I think that the bigger health issue across Africa is substandard medication. And that is where the medication is not at the efficacy of what it should be and is intended to be. Another thing is that the borders, uh, the government's doing, I'm sure, the best that they can do. But if I can just walk across a, a Nigerian border, um, or if I could just fly in with the medication, the borders are the issue, and so securing the borders is something that the government could do that would probably fix a thousand other things other than just medication issues. What do you intend to achieve in like 10 years? In 10 years, Medzaf is like the McKesson or CVS of the United States. So basically, we are a major distribution point and benefit point 
for hospitals and pharmacies to get the medications that they need, the inventory management tools that they need, you know, other benefits and communication from the manufacturers and we're a channel for uh, education and just improvement overall of patient health. If there's somebody out there who's seeking to get into business, what would you advise them to do? You have to have that inner something drive, that something deeper than money. Because let me tell you, this: if I wanted to make money, I would not be here. <laughs> Sorry. Like this is not this is not for me to be this is not for me to make money, really. It, I will make money, but it's not that's not the driving force. Identify a problem, and then deciding if you have something that you're actually willing to invest your life in. So I would say it is not cool to be an entrepreneur. Like it's I think there's like there's this perception that it's so cool and trendy. No. It is a sacrifice that can give you big rewards in the future. But those rewards have to be more than just money. With prevailing factors as unregulated drug distribution and porous borders, Medzaf is only scratching the surface of a bigger national issue. Nevertheless, this company has the potential to take back our health and change Nigeria's healthcare narrative.